Richard Krause. Winnie the Pooh is kind of a trick, a tricky character in the sense that he's somewhat square. Right. And yet he's also somewhat round. So it just depends on kind of the pose. Um, whichever you know basic shape you want to work with so um, I still kind of like to start with a circle mm -hmm. and then he has this funny very you know pronounced uh, forehead sloping forehead that comes down here like this and we kind of give him a nose that uh, Turns into you know, a <laughs> smile here, but uh, yeah, depending on depending on the angle. Right. Uh, sometimes he's more square uh, than he is uh, round. Kind of do that. <laughs> How long have you been an animator here? Uh, I've been with the uh, animation uh, Disney for 31 years. 31 years. Wow. Yeah. And why, why was it that, uh, do you think that Pooh uh, is making a comeback now? It's been a number of years since we've seen him on the big screen. Well, exactly. Um, the, uh, the studio basically uh, approached us and felt that it was uh, a good time to uh, bring Pooh back. The, uh, the franchise, of course, is a very... Uh, very important part mm -hmm. of the Disney stable and uh, they felt that uh, I don't know all the reasons but right. they felt at this point in time this would be a good uh, good opportunity and then uh, John Lasseter you know insisted that our department do it that feature animation do it right. so that we had the opportunity to to essentially you know really do it the way it's supposed to be done right now with Pooh, when you're drawing a character that is as well loved as this character, you know, it's been 30 years or so since he's been on the big screen. Do you make changes? Do you modernize? Or is it very important to keep that uh, sense of tradition going with the look of the character? Well, we tried uh, very hard to uh, stay with the Pooh that everybody remembers. Right. And if you really, uh, if you have a really sharp eye and you look at the original films, as we did early on, just to kind of refresh our, our memories and that, we realized that just about every animator that worked on Winnie the Pooh drew him slightly differently. Really? Yeah. What and, were some of the differences? Oh, uh, some animators drew him taller, some a little shorter, mm -hmm. a little thinner, fatter, just, <laughs> you know, proportions in the head and the ears, just little things that most audiences wouldn't pick up. You know, right. once he's painted yellow with his red shirt, he looks like Pooh, but... Right. But as we were sitting there watching the films, just kind of uh, thinking about, you know, all right, which 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 poo are we going to draw? So we we had to uh, first kind of sift through all the different slight variations that, that appear in the early films. And uh, the animator uh, Hal King was one that everybody kind of felt his way he drew Winnie the Pooh and the proportions and everything was kind of the definitive. Uh, model that we all uh, used as our, our basis. Right, right. And uh, it, it amazes me that, I don't know how long that took, two minutes or something <laughs> like that, and that it looks just like Winnie the Pooh. It's kind of a, I, I do not have a talent for drawing. And it's amazing to see it happen like that. How many, uh, how many drawings when you're working on a film like this, because it, the, the backgrounds are still very much the, the sort of watercolor kind mm -hmm. of beautiful backgrounds that we're used to. The, the characters themselves are a little bit more of the traditional cartoon characters that we, that we remember. Um, how many of these drawings a day do you, or how does it work? Like, you know, how many drawings like this are you expected to do a day and how many, how many hours do you yeah. work? Do you? Well, uh, for, for most of us, our, our days are, uh, you know, a nine to five yeah. or in our case, nine to six day. Um, we don't have a, a, a specific number of drawings, per se, in terms of our kind of weekly quotas. Our, right. our, our work is kind of broken down in terms of the scenes and the scene length. So right. uh, it's kind of expected as a rule for this production that we were doing about 10 feet a week. Right. And that's just, you know, because the characters were simpler and, and the animation would be a little, little easier than 
than something we did, say, like on Princess and the Frog. Right. Um, but it, it just all depends. You may do hundreds of drawings in a day. It all right. depends. And um, it's just, you know, you don't think about it. A lot of times people will say, well, don't you get tired of drawing the same thing over yeah. and over again? And, and I don't because I don't do that. Right. I, I may work with the same character. But every scene is new. Yeah. Every you know, it's it's a whole new acting uh, process that I have to go through to say, all right, so I'm Winnie the Pooh, and this is the situation. Right. You know what? You know how is Pooh uh, going to act and behave in this particular scene? So every day is different. Every day is different. I uh, I liked that the animation was kept simple mm -hmm. here, and because to me, I think this what makes this new Winnie the Pooh kind of special is that it really is a lovely mix of old and new. I like that the Richard and Robert Sherman songs are in there, along with some new songs. I like that um, the animation still feels vintage, but there's something very modern about it still, and I think uh, like the. Uh, the I don't know what you call it, the honey delirium scene where you know <laughs> um, it, it feels very modern to me and yet the song is very traditional. Yeah, yeah. The um, you know that was that was that was the tricky balance. Mm -hmm. of how do we, you know, how do we, you know, capture the the charm, the essence of of the original of shows that we all love that mm -hmm. we all grew up with, but it's 2011. Yeah. You know, and and Pooh. You know, like Mickey is, is kind of transcends time. You know, he's a timeless character. And, and we all felt that 2011 Pooh is just as viable today as, as he was in 1965 or when right. the original one came out. But it was, yeah, it was just finding those that balance. And I think the, the new songs, as you said, really capture the flavor of what the Sherman Brothers did originally. You know, but, it's, but they're new and mm -hmm. they're fresh. So I think that's... Uh, that's what really makes this project a lot of fun. Yeah, and I think it's just the right length for young attention spans as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, kids can get a little squirmy. Um, so what? What the poo that we're seeing here? What? Uh, what's he thinking? What's the? Uh, what were you thinking when you drew him? As you said, you were <laughs> you were kind of you know you put yourself in the the mind frame. Of uh, so what's at, happening? At this here? point, I was just hoping he looks like poo. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, no, poo is basically he's just a very very happy guy. Yeah. You know, a lot of people uh, have asked, you know, well, what is Pooh's, you know, character, what makes him so appealing and to audiences. And I, I think he's just, he's just a very sincere, very likable character. He's the kind of person that, you know, you'd want as a friend. He's right. very loyal, very faithful. He's not stupid, you know, but he's naive. He has a childlike quality to him. But I think that that's, you know, those are just very timeless, uh, appealing qualities that we all like. Yeah. Which of the characters uh, is the most challenging uh, uh, from an animation From standpoint. an animation point of view. Well, it, it all depends. Um, I was also in charge not only of Winnie the Pooh, but Christopher Robin. Mm. And he's probably, you know, possess, uh, poses the most challenge in a lot of ways. Because he's, by comparison, he's a much more complicated character right. to draw. And his character and personality is a little... A little more vague, a little harder to kind of get our uh, hands around, but right. uh, but he was fun. I enjoyed. How do you interact with the other animators? So you say you're in charge of Winnie and and uh, Christopher Robin. Uh, there are scenes though that have them and all the other characters in them. So do you frame out what you have to draw in a scene and then hand that over to someone else who then fills in Piglet and how right. does that work? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Generally, what happens if you have a, a scene that has multiple characters, um, one of the characters is going to be dominant. Right. So like you and I are talking right now. Right now, I'm doing the talking, and you're kind of listening. And so you get that kind of dynamic going on. So usually what we'll do is we'll just decide, well, this is predominantly a Winnie the Pooh scene, and Eeyore is just listening. Mm -hmm. um, so I would do my animation first, and then I would hand that to the... Uh, animator who's doing Eeyore and then he could you know back in Eeyore mm -hmm. sometimes um, we'll do both and there were several scenes that I did early on in the production where I did both uh, for example Pooh and Eeyore together because they had a lot of uh, physical contact yeah, when they're in that uh, tree stump when Pooh goes in and that's when they first right, notice he, the tail is missing right, right exactly so that was that was a, a sequence where uh, I actually ended up doing both characters in, in a couple of scenes right. um, but that's generally what happens. We just will decide, okay, well, you know, Eeyore is dominant and Pooh's just listening. So right. the Eeyore animator would go first. Right. So it's just kind of a back and forth like that. Right.
Richard Krauss.